Hello everyone, I am Asanka. The title of this paper is Cutting through the emissions feature selection from electromagnetic side channel data for activity detection. This paper is co-authored by myself, Louis Mireles, Anne Lekak and Max Scanlon. We are from UCD Forensics and Security Research Group in Ireland. Electromagnetic side channel analysis. This can be an entirely new term for some of you. Um, so here are some basics. When an electrical current goes through a wire with variations over time, it causes electromagnetic radiation. The characteristics of this radiation such as frequency, amplitude and phase directly correlates with the original electrical current. Microprocessors in our computers work by manipulating electrical pulses using high-speed clocks. They generate strong electromagnetic noise and most importantly that noise leaks information about what is going inside the processor. The exploitation of these EM emissions to eavesdrop on computers is called electromagnetic side channel analysis or EMSCA. So EMSCA has been applied for various information security purposes for a long time. Detecting malicious modifications to hardware and software, detecting internal states of devices, and even retrieving cryptographic keys has been performed. Uh, it has been argued that digital forensics uh, can benefit from EMSCA as well. Um, there are plenty of computing devices that are impossible or difficult to be forensically analyzed with existing methods. Um, IoT devices in particular pose this challenge. Things like health implants, sports wearables, um, smart burglar alarms, smart thermostats can be valuable forensic um, evidence sources, but their custom designs prevent us from analyzing them. Under these circumstances, EMSCA can play a role to inspect these devices without requiring to physically tamper them. But we have a problem. With each computing device uh, having a unique uh, information leaking frequency, we have the problem of identifying that. We don't really know the exact frequencies where uh, information is being leaked. So the solution we have is um, acquiring EM data over a wide bandwidth. But this causes a large amount of highly dimensional data, making it difficult to process them. Um, for example, uh, this spectrogram here illustrates the data acquired from an Arduino Leonardo device with a bandwidth of 20 megahertz, centered at 288 megahertz. If we used a short-term Fourier transform window of one millisecond to convert the time domain signal into a frequency domain, we end up with 20,000 potential frequency channels. As shown in these waveform plots right here, uh, different randomly selected channels have a unique signal pattern. But we don't know which of them leaks useful information. Some of them can be just uh, noise. 
um, while some of them can be the legitimate information leaking channels. Now this is the problem we are tackling in this research. How do we recognize the information leaking useful channels among all the uh, thousands of uh, channels that we have acquired? So this paper produces the following contributions. We experimentally evaluate multiple frequency channel selection methods that can help to reduce dimensionality of EM data. Then through that we introduce a methodology using a random forest classifier to identify information leaking frequency channels from EM datasets. Um, finally, we demonstrate the effectiveness of this approach by classifying software activities running on a representative IoT device. So, this is our experimental plan. We use Arduino Leonardo as the target device and um, we sample data at the rate of 20 megahertz using a software defined radio hardware and we set the short term Fourier transform window to one millisecond in order to convert time domain signals into frequency domain and we use 10 different software activities running on the target device as the classes we need to identify using a random forest classifier. Each of these software activities are arbitrary programs uh, with a time complexity of big O n. So that means all these programs has the same computational complexity but they have different uh, uh, code execution paths. Our objective is to reduce the number of frequency channels in the EM dataset from 20,000 channels to a considerably less number without compromising the classification accuracy. So we need to uh, talk a little bit about random forest classification because it is the, the classification algorithm we use in each experiment. Random forest classifiers use a collection of decision trees to classify data. The two main parameters are the number of trees or what we call estimators and the depth of those trees. The final classification prediction is the majority vote among all the decision trees in the random forest. In our experiments, we use 500 estimators and a maximum depth of 50 levels. Uh, in order to uh, finalize our classification results, uh, in order to improve the uh, reliability of our final results, we use cross-validation uh, with 5 partitions and 10 repetitions in each of our experiments. So this is our first experiment. In, our, in this first experiment, we directly use all the 20,000 channels to train a random forest classifier as a baseline. We had used uh, 5,000 random forest trees and the average accuracy we received was 0.93. Actually, the accuracy of the classes 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 and 9 were 100 percent. The accuracy of classes 5 and 8 are acceptable. However, class 6 produces a very low classification accuracy. Um, the algorithm confuses class 6 with classes 5 and 8 quite often. If class 6 was not considered, the overall accuracy would be 0.98. We take this experiment as the baseline for our other evaluations. 
So in our second experiment, we use principal component analysis PCA as the dimensionality reduction method of, uh, of the electromagnetic data set. The features generated by PCA are called eigenvectors or principal components. The, uh, these eigenvalues in the eigenvector are ordered according to the amount of information they contain. Um, the average accuracy we received by training a random forest classifier with the features identified by PCA uh, was 0.18, which is completely unfavorable. Uh, this result is likely due to the high number of input features and most features being constant low values. Therefore, we conclude that PCA is not a suitable method for channel selection in this kind of EM side channel datasets. In our third experiment, we select channels by looking at the variance. For each frequency channel from the 20,000 channels, we calculate the variances. Um, by doing so, we try to identify frequency channels that have a high variance with an appropriate threshold value. Our assumption was that the channels with high variance leaks information. In order to select at least 100 channels uh, that has the top variance, we set the threshold to 1.06 times 10 to the power minus 8. This resulted in 103 channels from out of the 20,000 original channels. When these selected channels were used to train and test a random forest classifier, the average accuracy we received was 0.54, which is still unsatisfactory. This means variance thresholding is much better than PCA, principal component analysis, but still not the accuracy to be useful. In the fourth experiment, uh, we do the same, but this time with average instead of variance. So we calculate the average value of each frequency channel. And the assumption is that the channels with high average values have useful information. For this purpose, we set the average threshold to 6.99 times 10 to the power minus 5. The selected channels with highest 100 averages were used to train and test a random forest classifier and the average accuracy was 0.54. This is still unsatisfactory. With this result, um, we concluded that High variance and high average alone are not indicators of information leaking channels. However, building on top of those experience, uh, in our fifth exper experiment, we combine the two together. Here we calculate the average value of each channel per class initially and then calculate the variance of these average values across classes. This means we no longer look at the variance or the average of individual EM data samples, but the variance of averages. As you can see from this figure right here, um, we have more peaks for the variances among 20,000 channels now. This is an encouraging uh, figure. So now we set the threshold to 3.3 times 10 to the power minus 5 
in order to filter the highest 100 channels. With these 100 channels, uh, the average classification accuracy we received was 0 0.90. With this positive result, uh, we increased the number of channels we are selecting to 500 by tweaking the threshold even further. That caused the classification accuracy to reach 0.93. The result of this experiment indicates that uh, we can reach higher classification accuracies than our 20,000 channel baseline uh, by using this method with only 500 channels. Recursive feature elimination uh, is another method we evaluated with our EM side channel dataset. Here, uh, uh, RFE recursive feature elimination creates supervised models starting with all possible attributes of the data and then rejects weak attributes in each subsequent step. This figure here uh, shows that the accuracy achieved by random forest uh, uh, RFE recursive feature elimination for the increasing number of channels uh, and uh, the highest accuracy uh, uh, was reached at 81 channels. You can see it in this red dot. Uh, and the accuracy we achieved there is 0 0.90. So this result is much similar uh, to the previous experiment, experiment 5, but for 100 channels. So our last experiment, this is the last experiment, um, uh, was to look at statistical properties of the EM signal with the time window. So what happens here is we define a sliding window of 50 sample points and then for each window we calculate 18 statistical properties in both time and frequency domains to consider as features. Due to the windowing, we get less number of training samples for the original EM from the original EM dataset for the training and testing of a random forest classifier. The classification result we achieved was 0.8 with this method. Um, we believe this method needs further research with a larger dataset to conclude its effectiveness. At least with our current data set, its classification accuracy is not sufficient. So in summary, we have tested seven methods to check which works best to reduce channels in EM side channel data sets. Um, we wanted to achieve this while maintaining a good classification accuracy. Among these seven methods we tested, Averaging among classes and variance thresholding across the classes to select 500 channels produce the best result. This means a reduction of original 20,000 channels down to 500 channels is possible while maintaining classification ability of the software activities. Um, lower number of channels means faster processing with less computing power. It also permits us to store only the useful channels for future processing. Um, that saves storage space. So the take home, take home message from this uh, experiment is this. We can uh, incorporate EM side channel analysis uh, analysis uh, method into triage examination phase of digital investigations by sufficiently reducing the dimensionality of EM data. So we are another step closer to enabling EM SEA in digital forensics. So that's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you so much for your attention and I'm happy to answer your questions. Thanks.